Hey everybody, in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is walking you guys through an install of an X21 Value S system from NWT Cyclotronics. So what we're gonna be installing it on is a cool little test rig here to showcase the exact functionality and answer some questions that you guys might have. So let's dive right into it. Okay guys, now before we begin, this is a test rig I'm building to showcase a lot of the install products. So you'll notice there's also a starter solenoid that we offer as well as a digital regulator rectifier. These each have their own install videos, so at some point in this video you'll see it kind of jumps around with those all of a sudden being complete. And if you feel like you need some more information on those two aspects, I have a video for you guys as well. All right, I got my test display all made up and now it's time to wire it. So let me uh, kind of take you through what's on here. I'm still missing an ignition switch. I'm gonna pick one up tomorrow. But beyond that, we can get started on this. So let me run you through what we have and the game plan moving forward. All right, so looking at the uh, board, we're gonna start. We just have a generic battery. Uh, this is just like for like a little ATV or something like that. I don't need anything big for this setup. We have the X21 kind of front and center here, and this is going to be a good video on just kind of how to run everything. We have our starter solenoid, which I've mentioned before. We have the digital regulator rectifier. This is the S version, so it just has a sensing wire. I have a stator rotor here that is just kind of for mock-up purposes, just to kind of show showcase how wiring is ran. I have an LED strip tail light here. This one does have built-in signals, which we will wire up over here. I have a rear brake light switch just for fun. I have some turn signals underneath the bars over here. And then I have the, uh, I have a gauge. This is basically your, your warning indicator. So like I have my high beam indicator, an oil pressure light, turn signal, and a neutral light. So we're gonna utilize those. I'll show you how to wire that. The horn is over here, tucked up underneath the bars. If we spin this thing around, See, I have a set of LEDs up front here, so I just kind of wanted something as small as I could to fit on this whole setup. So you can imagine, low beam, high beam, pretty self-explanatory. The controls I have are the uh, X21 value S switches, and then the actual hand controls, just some generic ones I had on the shelf. They have a front brake switch, of course, along with a clutch safety switch, and that's very important because I wanted to showcase how to wire that up. And that, leads me to this button right here. This is going to act as my neutral switch on the motorcycle or what would be on the engine. So I'm gonna simulate it with this switch to showcase that kind of starter override feature that's within here. Other than that, I just have a, I just have like kind of a bus bar. I'm gonna use this to tie in all my grounds and uh, keep it all organized instead of trying to ground through the base here. I just wanna kind of keep it nice and clean and isolated, so. All right guys, now before we go any further with this, I want you to do some stuff for me. Now, if you're going to install an X21, if you're going to install any of these products, um, I know this can be kind of daunting looking. I mean, it's kind of like a flying spaghetti monster right now. And that's okay. It can be overwhelming. And, you know, me personally, I have like, I have pretty bad ADD. So wiring, even though I, uh, I pride myself in doing quality wiring, I'm not going to say it's easy for me. So if you get discouraged, if you get kind of overwhelmed, just walk away, take five, you know, just, just walk away from it. And uh, instead of looking at it as one big thing, I highly recommend you just break it down into individual bite-sized chunks. That's gonna really help you uh, in the long run here. So getting going, you wanna be organized, you wanna have good information in front of you. So I've mentioned these before, all of the diagrams for all of the products that we offer, the installation manuals, everything you can follow here is all available on the website so of course I have them printed out because I'm going to utilize them more than you guys but feel free to print them out have them on your phone screenshotted whatever they're they're readily available and please reference them so uh, last kind of thing of note I know as I send these systems and components out to you guys I know you're gonna be excited to get them on the bike but slow down okay uh, I highly recommend you do not just rip it out of the package throw this on the bike, throw a power and a ground to it, hook up the switches and just try to get stuff work. No, don't do it like that. Take your time, follow the installation guide, plan it out, be methodical about it, and you know, and again, take your time. I know I've said that multiple times, but again, take your time, do it right, and be sure that you're gonna have everything working whenever it's time to finally hit the key. 
All right, let's dive in. Step one, disconnect your power. If you have a battery on the bike, disconnect it. For us, you know, we have our main fuse here. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. So there's not gonna be any power distributed along this system. So you wanna just make sure there's no power on the bike. And that's just a safety conscious move while you are dangling a bunch of loose wires around that way you don't short anything out and uh, ruin your day. Now per the installation manual, here we go, right page, X21 value. You're gonna have a checklist here, walk through that. And then on uh, section A, you're gonna have some kind of like things to check off if you want. And then some general wire size guides or wire gauge guides. And for us, this is the stage we're at right now. We lay everything out in its place and then we start formulating a plan. So everything is like, you can imagine this is a motorcycle. Everything is laid out where we want it. Everything is mounted. And now it's time to run wiring. Now on to section C, uh, we talked here, nice and red, remove the fuse, disconnect power, that kind of thing. Now this, this page kind of shows how everything kind of wires into the X21. So the regulated rectifiers, the battery, the solenoid, starter motor, your ignition switch, that kind of thing. And for us, what I want to do is kind of just start working on grounds. So what I'm going to do is start running grounds from all of the places they're going to need it. And I'm going to run them up to here tie those into the battery that's gonna that's gonna clean up a lot of this right off the bat All right, well now we have our grounds done, so let me kind of review our pathways here. So this being just kind of a test assembly, I'm not powering any really high current stuff, no starter or anything like that, so I'm under gauged on some of the wires. But we have our negative side down here through this bus bar, everything is connected into all of these. So the grounds run all the way around. I have one main ground to the X21 itself. I have my grounds running up to the headlights over here. I also have at this point, that splits off. Those are my grounds for my two turn signals here. I also have a ground running up to my neutral safety switch. Remember, I did change the switch, but this is going to act as the neutral switch for the bike. Now after that, I have a ground, of course, running all the way back to the digital regulator rectifier here. And then I have the horn ground running up to the horn, of course. And after that, the last grounds that I have are for the high beam indicator and the turn signal indicator. Those two come together as a blue and a green. So I have those coming together, you can't really see it, but those go into this loom here and join into this section. So now that the grounds are done, it's time to turn our attention to the power distribution side of things. Now again, before we get going, you'll note I did put a ground on this, but I'm going to undo that and act as though this is a live battery. That way, when you start running your power side, you're not going to you know, create any potential arc points or anything like that. So just got to be safety conscious here. So we're going to start off with our battery cable. So from the battery to the starter solenoid, and then of course our starter solenoid to the key. Then from the key, we go back to the X21. Now, if this were a real bike, you would want eight gauge cable or like eight to six gauge from your battery for both your power and your ground. Now, being that we're just running a couple lights with this, I'm gonna under gauge it. So I'm gonna use, I think like some 12 gauge, 14 gauge, something like that. And that will be fine for now, but you can see the size difference here from what you probably should be using to just kind of uh, what I'm gonna do for demonstration purposes. All right, now first up, like I've mentioned, we're gonna treat this like it's a live battery. This one has not been charged yet, but we just want to be safety conscious, so we're going to remove the ground. I'm going to go a step further, tape off the post so nothing can accidentally make contact with it, because again, that'll ruin your day. 
All right, now it's time to get started on power distribution. So I'm gonna run a power cable from the battery and that's gonna to go to the positive lug on the starter solenoid here. All right, so we have our main power cable into the solenoid and next up we need to actually start running power back out of it. So on the left side we have our power coming out of the solenoid that goes up to the key here or the ignition switch and then our other pole is going to run out and it's going to go back down to the actual X21 unit but if you remember we actually have our sensing wire that is this red with white stripe that comes from the DRRS so this is going to run down and join in the wire from here and they're both going to enter the X21 right here. They're going to be tied in together. So let's go ahead and get that done. Alright, power from the battery to the solenoid, solenoid power out to the key, key power out into the X21 itself, tied in to the sensing wire, that's going to be on your voltage regulator rectifier. So now it's time to move on, the only other thing on this page that we should wire up is going to be the rest of the solenoid, that's going to be the solenoid trigger power. And for that we have our green with yellow stripe along with our purple. Those are going to go to two terminals on the X21. So I'm going to strip these uh, where they need to be and then it will solder the tips of them. And uh, you definitely want to solder the tips to kind of give the wire a little bit more rigidity for something to uh, bite onto. And we'll get those installed. On this page we have everything done so time to move on. Now on section D it's going to talk about multiple different ways of setting up your various ignitions uh, whether it be with the power out the engine power out select button that's going to be on the front of the unit down here. So that's going to be like the difference between like let's say your points breaker your CDI or like a magneto setup this works for all of them so this guide will show you how to wire that but since we do not have a ignition system on the piece of aluminum here we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about this system but all the information is in here so after that we have what looks like our lights our signals so let's go ahead and get started if you remember we have all of the grounds ran for the tail light here as well as the turn signal up here and everything is ran down to here so we have our turn signal outputs along with the uh, headlight high and low beam and what I have to do is run some wiring from the actual turn signals up here all the way back down and we'll be good to go. So that should be pretty easy.
right guys, well, we have all of the outputs done on the X21 that's on the right side here. The only one we're missing is of course the ignition output which I've talked about. And now it's time to start doing the easy stuff. So we move back over here to the instruction manual, flip the page, section F. Basically here we're just plugging some stuff in. So this is where we're going to utilize the controls. Now again, the system I'm using here is a type S, but this will be the same thing. Section F, and this is a type P control. I have all these printed off, and then of course type M. So the instructions are gonna be the same, the same layout. They're all section F, but since we're on type S, we're gonna reference these so we can run our bar controls. And those are gonna be plug and play, and then we have the front brake switch and the clutch safety switch. Then we will also run the cable that goes from the X21 down to the rear brake switch and neutral switch we've talked about and then up here we'll have our gauge or dash output lights. Alright now up front here we have the right bar control and we have the supplied harness that's already pre-wired. This is going to be for our front brake switch and then of course on the other side this is the pre-wired control. So these are color coordinated to the color coordinated spot on the X21. Over here we have our clutch switch so let me kind of get these things wired up. drape that over there to take some tension off it, but we have the front brake switch hooked up. Over on this side, we'll get this going. And here you can see the uh, clutch switch. Now we run our cables. All right, so I have the cables just kind of looped around here to take up some slack because they're left extra long to, you know, fit a motorcycle and not a piece of aluminum. So we have these cables ran cleanly down here. I'm going to kind of get them in place, but I wanted to show the colors on the end here. Now, this is kind of a pre-production model of this, but the packages that you will receive, there's gonna be a different color piece of heat shrink on each of these wires. And that is gonna correspond with the colors that you see in here. So you see blue, green, and yellow. And then on the other side, this far one is red. So you just match them up. Another note, please try to avoid, you know, just pulling on these uh, terminals too hard. And then whenever you release them, Definitely try to just only pull by the white plastic. All right, so now that we have these ran, I'm gonna work on this section here. This is gonna be the brake switch the neutral switch and your oil pressure. Now, of course, we're not using the oil pressure, so I'm gonna give you the idea of how this is gonna work. One of these wires, we're gonna plug this in here, one of these wires is going to extend up and go to my neutral switch here. That's already connected to ground to complete the path. The other two are gonna to go to my rear brake switch here, and I'm gonna have the oil pressure one just kinda of dangling, it's not gonna to go to anywhere. That section of harness is done. Of course, we have our oil pressure light that we're just going to leave off right here. But I just have two wires from the brake light switch, a couple bullet connectors, and then that goes right here. This wire right here runs up, and that is to our neutral switch. The other side is to ground. This we need to remove. There we go. 
So this is acting as the neutral switch on the engine so we can uh, work on the starter features. All right, home stretch. Now we're just onto this section here. We're gonna wire up the dash output with this harness. So the only thing we're gonna forgo is of course the oil pressure light. And then we're gonna tie in, uh, because on this application we have just a single turn signal bulb, we're going to tie in both the yellow and the green into one wire to that light. Alright guys, we have all the wiring done on this thing and I think we are now ready to go ahead and try this thing out. Now, there is on the next page, section, section G, this is going to walk you through the system check and the process for just trying this thing out. Remember, we want to be safe about this, we want to make sure we have everything how it should be. So you want to go and do a visual check, a visual inspection of everything, uh, double, triple checking. Remember, we still have the battery disconnected here. I still have no main fuse in it. So follow the instructions on this page. I'm gonna do that for you guys and we will uh, see how this thing goes. All right, so we just finished section F. Now we flip the page and we are on to the system check. So do a visual once over, have all those switches in the key off position, gear position in neutral. Install the main fuse, turn the key switch to the on position and then here we're gonna have a se uh, series of light flashes and then we'll start trying everything out. And this is designed to kind of walk you through all the features and how to operate everything on here. Now, again, this is the type S. Also the same thing for type P. It's gonna be a little bit different sequence because you have a different button type press. And also for the type M, again, because we only have two buttons in this one. So everything operates on a button sequence here. All right, let's go ahead and get the battery hooked up. And now before we begin, I have the key in the off position. They request put your bike in neutral. And then now we can uh, put the main fuse in. All right, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. All right, there we have our marker flash there. The switch is in neutral. My neutral light is illuminated right now. So there's no light right now. I have the light in the off position. The X21, you're not really going to be able to see, but this is glowing right now. So let's go marker light, kind of like marker running light. So that's functional there. There's our lights on, so that's a low beam. All right. From here, check front and rear brake switch. That works. That works. Turn high beam switch to on. There's our high beam. I do have the high beam illuminated on the dummy light here. Turn high beam switch to off. Push the passing light switch. That is going to be back here. So that illuminates the high beam real quick, just instantaneously. High beam is always available regardless of what your master position switch is. So I can hold that and it's high beam right there. All right, push the horn switch. Let's see. Okay, that obviously works. Hazard light switch. Everything flashes as it should. 
Now, here's an interesting part. We're going to actually mess with the uh, flash pattern right here. So on the bottom of the X21, let me turn this off. Now on the bottom of the X21, there is a flash pattern adjust variable dial here. So at this point, I'm going to turn this back on. We're going to adjust the dial for the desired flash pattern rate. So that's slower. Faster and faster. Right about there, I think, for me, works good. So that is adjusted. Hazard switch to off. Check our left and right indicators. Works perfect. Works perfect. Click the center for off. All right, I'm going to turn the lights off to conserve battery here. Let's see. Push the engine switch to on, so our kill switch. I'm going to push that to on. So now that would be powering our ignition, should we have any. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. And uh, I think of note with the X21s and like your Morty Marty Tricky, there's a slight about a half second delay programmed in. So it doesn't, it's not going to click right away. But we're just going to hear, listen for the click on the solenoid. So on that click, it's sending battery power to the starter motor, so we could assume that it's working at that point. Works perfect. Now this is what I wanted to demonstrate with the starter safety features, so I'm going to go ahead and flick the bike out of neutral, so not in neutral anymore, and we shouldn't be able to crank it. Nothing happens. Pull the clutch in. Works perfect. So just like a factory setup. Go back to neutral and we can start the bike. Um, now you can obviously wire this, you don't have to have a clutch safety switch, but you would then make, have to make sure that your bike is in neutral to then start it. So it appears that everything, everything works perfect on here. So a little high. Low beam, high beam. Of course, turn signals are facing me right now. Play around with that. Got our flashers. Everything works perfect. I'm not going to hit the horn again because that's extremely loud in here. So here's an interesting one. So we got the flashers going on. We still have brakes. Very cool. And notice uh, on the turn signal indicator here, I actually wired both wires into one and there was no diodes needed because this takes care of everything. So we go high beam, we have it illuminated there. Right here in this corner, that's where the oil pressure switch would be, but obviously we're not running, uh, we don't have an engine. And then our neutral switch. There you have it. Sweet. Let's go. Master light on. Awesome. All right, continuing with this uh, test rig here. The X21, if you notice on the description, it says it has auto resetting fuses. Let me demonstrate. All right, we're going to turn the flashes on. Be a good demonstration here. Okay. So 
This is our power output for the switches. This is hooked straight to ground. So if I touch this to this, that would mean a straight short to ground, right? Right side just went out. Take that off. Fixed. Simple as that. Smart controller. All right guys, now that is gonna do it for this. My main goal for this was to provide the most clear and accurate information on installing this product to show you guys how, how simple it really is and go through the uh, install manual and showcase how clear that is written. So I want you guys to utilize that one. But if you guys have any troubles, if you have any questions, always reach out. It's no problem, we expect that. And that is part of the customer service that we strive to provide to you guys. So anyway, I'm gonna end it off here. I hope you guys like this one and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Am I scary yet? Is this like a ghost story? Blinded by the lights.